questions like we have today. We have lots of resources that hopefully um, can help you uh, in, in your role. Um, and I think uh, just um, there, if you haven't come in contact with us before, do have a look at our website. There's lots of um, res free resources. I'd say that kind of 90% of the things that we uh, have are, are free, or, or we don't say free, fully funded by the department. Um, so you're more than welcome to, to have a look. Um, I would say I have just had the triangle of doom of a bad network quality, so hopefully we won't have any issues with disappearing. So I do do apologise if I do disappear for a little bit. I usually come back very quite quickly. So let's move on to this, what we come, what you all come here today to talk to, for me to talk about. So I will be talking a little bit about cybersecurity. Um, kind of what it is and how to make improvements and talk about using emails at work um, and sharing uh, information digitally um, and a little bit about how to use your mobile phone safely and how to use WhatsApp and then finally around social media, what to do and what not to do. So um, and just to kind of say um when i created this uh presentation it was with the mind of um kind of frontline staff so care workers support workers team leaders uh those kind of roles care coordinators um i can see i've got a few managers who are who i know uh, you're more than welcome and Definitely this information will be useful for you too, but just some of the language I've used, it's it's more aimed at um, a direct, what I call a direct line worker, which is kind of a generic term for, for all the people who are kind of doing the direct line work out there. Um, so um, like I say, some of the language and some of the way I've described things, if you are a manager, you might want to have a look at uh, things a bit more deeply because it, I, I kind of just sort of kind of touch the surface because as a direct line worker, you perhaps wouldn't be um, need to know this kind of background of some of the things I'm talking about today. So we're going to start by just kind of covering what is cybersecurity. Um, so you probably have heard that name in the in, in the media. It's something that's kind of talked about quite a bit, um, and it is really sort of kind of the name that we use to safeguard, um, to kind of uh, avoid and reduce any in, uh, disruptions from an attack of data or computers on your mobile phone. Um, and it not only covers that confidentiality and privacy, but it also covers all the um, available data that's available. And it's really in social care, particularly, it's really vital that we make sure that we that the, that data is secure because often that data will be very sensitive. It will be information about the people that you are supporting. And as I said, on there, security breaches. Um, which you could have to can uh, include paper records and, and fax machines and, and even verbally, but the really serious security breaches that you perhaps are here in the media, um, uh, there have been several where, um, for instance, hospitals have had, uh, atta uh, had, had, had uh, attacks or have lost data in some way has really, um, you know, serious consequences because it's so easy to distribute information uh, digitally. And if the information gets into the wrong hands or are uh, distributed accidentally um, into the wrong places, it can really um, uh, kind of go go wide. It can get to a lot of people that perhaps you don't want them to not want it to. So um, as it says on there, everybody needs to be aware of kind of just a basic about cyber security. And you may think, actually, I don't know anything about cyber security, but as we go through today, hopefully you will see that you perhaps do know more than, than you realise. Um, uh, all staff um, should have annual security, uh, cyber security training. Um, I will later on uh, provide you with a link about how to get that. It is completely free. You can access this for free and I will kind of cover how, how you access it. Um, all the information about the cyber security that I'll be talking about in the first few slides here, uh, all that information comes from a cyber security uh, guide that Skills for Care and Digital Social, Digital Social Care developed last year. Really useful guide. The language in there is really simple. It's something that is easy to understand um, and it's, got, it's, it's done in really easy steps. Um, 
so I think if you are a manager on this on this webinar today, uh, really it would be worth having a look at that. And there's a link at the one of the last slides to the, to that particular guide. So today I'm kind of mainly going to cover uh, the things that I think a frontline worker might need to know about data security. But if you are a manager, you might want to have a look at some of these things a little bit more in details. So in terms of improving cybersecurity, it is an area that is constantly changing. As I said earlier, it can seem a bit confusing. Um, a lot of information uh, uh, kind of available in the media that might seem quite confusing. So it's just kind of about breaking it down. What can you, um, as, a, as a worker for an organisation, what is it that you can do to improve cybersecurity? And there are some very simple steps to, to do that. So first of all, um, you know, steps could include not using unsupported software. So what we mean by that is um, if you're, for instance, are using the Windows package, software package, uh, you would probably have seen that something like Windows 7 is no longer updated, therefore it's not supported by Windows, and that means that any um, attacks that comes from, from externally are not, are not kind of, you're not protected from that. It's really important to use software that is still um, being supported by something like Windows and obviously um, if you're using a different system, there will be other other um, unsupported software. So making sure that that's uh, what you're using at your organisation. Um, having up to date virus check your data up and the organisational type um, information that uh, or, or things to think about. Perhaps not the frontline worker may not think about these things, but if they see something like a a, a pop up saying, you know, you you know, do your virus checks. That's some of the things that you need. You know, if you see that coming up when you're using a computer at work, definitely press and say yes, I want a virus check happening or a virus update being done. Uh, and also making sure the software and apps are updated. And we'll talk a little bit about mobile phones. But if you are using any kind of software or any kind of systems, make sure that you are updating. And it says on there, you can you can uh, often choose to have them updated automatically or overnight if the device is plugged in or set your device, and this is particularly mobile phones, to update automatically when you're connected to Wi-Fi so it doesn't cost any data. Um, uh, and I think, uh, and and I will kind of cover a few more steps. So these are the sort of kind of the, the kind of first steps when you are improving cybersecurity. So uh, the next step really is to think about how you are sharing records in your work. So obviously in social care we do share a lot of records. So that might, as I said earlier, might be verbally, it might be. Uh, over the phone, you're sharing information about the people you're supporting. So thinking about how you're doing that, making sure that that information that 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 is is protected, that you're doing something to make sure that you are protecting the information that you're giving to external parties. Now, we, uh, you may have seen in the in, in the media, sector media that faxes, for instance, are not particularly secure because you don't know where that fax is ending. So if you put in the wrong digit, it could end up somewhere different. So uh, a lot of hospitals are no longer have faxes be because of that. So thinking about what can I do? Can I ring the person so they know that it's getting to the right place? Can I have some pre-stored numbers in the machine to um, make sure that it's get definitely getting to the right to the right person or avoiding to use fax because really it's not particularly secure, particularly if you're sending very kind of sensitive information, people's names, their date of birth, uh, medical information. Um, uh, and the same if you're doing something verbally, just again making sure you're checking who you are giving that information to, or is it the right person, etc. Uh, email really is the most secure, especially if you're using a secure um, emails. Um, and I've got, there's a link there, which is why it's blue, which kind of kind of shows how that can be done and NHS mail is that is an a um, a really good way of doing that so the NH, NHS mail is secure um, if you are in if you're a care home and you are in Kent and Medway then uh, there is a local project happening at the moment where there's some training available if you're not if you're not currently signed up to um, 
director NHS Mail. Um, we can fairly easy to do um, and there's some training available and hopefully Emily, Emily are you able to just share the email about how to access that local training? If you are a home care provider um, then uh, I would recommend going on to the digital social care um, uh, website there's lots of information about how to sign up to NHS mail on there and they're running they run fairly frequent webinars as well about how to how to do that um, um, so using email safely at work so this is probably the bit that a uh, frontline worker you may be involved much much more in, in terms of kind of digital safety so how do you make sure that you are sending email safely so it's a really good way of communicating over you can provide information but we do know that the information we get back uh, or when we open our inbox can contain other spam or, or junk email and and yes it can be annoying but actually can if, if we don't deal with it correctly it can cause considerably harm to computer and to the organization as well um, we always say delete suspicious emails don't open attachment if you're not sure um, one of the ways you can do that is by hovering over the mouse so when you see that email address if it's something that you're not completely sure about or it looks funny or it's not something you're expecting have a hover over the email address and you can see is this the right email address that I usually get from this person or have they been hacked in some way or somebody sending you an email that perhaps doesn't isn't from the person that you think it is um, and don't log on to uh, any links they provided in an email. Um, if you've been asked to log on to an account, go into the um, have that account on your favourites and therefore um, uh, from that, um, that kind of um, uh, kind of log in via the account rather than via the email because then you know it is that it is that organisation. Um, and, and everything I'm talk, talking about here really kind of talk it kind of is around that those phishing emails which I'm sure you've heard in the media talking about those phishing emails because that is a scam so it's criminal criminals uh, sending a fake email uh, and and trying do something with that and, and from that when, they, when you're, you're doing something then trying to get information from you so trying to either get your account details your password or um, you know kind of private email uh, private information either about you or about the people you're supporting so being really careful about when you're getting those um, what could be seen as phishing emails and I can say sh share myself I had a phishing email, email privately um, just a couple of days ago um, from from my like from my bank and but it just looked a bit funny um, and when again when I hovered over the um, the email address the email address was uh, was wrong um, but it was really really sophisticated so the sort of thing that was uh, what they'd done was that um, the email for instance was um, should be mail at Lloyds Bank and instead they have changed it to lloydsbank.mail.uk so therefore it, you know had I not kind of thought this looked a bit funny I think a good thing to do uh, if you're receiving any, any emails that you're thinking oh it's a bit odd I didn't expect this or wonder what that's about or they ask me to do something that seems a bit, a bit unusual um, then is to google you know either the sender or the email address etc to see has anybody else kind of reported that um that as a, as a concern and if you are concerned for that suspicious email to that report phishing.go.uk and they then deal with that they will um they will investigate it and they will then see well is this something that we need to be looking at and if they find that it is suspicious they will um uh, they will kind of block that email address to send out other emails and they will also investigate if you have experience a crime and obviously we're going slightly off topic here but if you have experience a crime then that's not the place to report it isn't there? but if you look on their on their website that you can see and I'll, I'll edit the website at the end um, and, and kind of delete that email after you've after you've sent it for, forward it to the uh, fish to the phishing report phishing um, the last two bits are sort of kind of more general uh, a good good practice when you are um, using emails at work so double checking email address especially if you're sensing sending something sensitive 
Um, obviously, if you're using NHS mail, you have a, have additional, but if you're sending it outside of the NHS and you're sending some very kind of susp um, sensitive information, maybe start by, and it's the first time you've sent an email to that person, maybe start by sending an email just saying, um, just checking this is the right email. Uh, can you just confirm before I send this sensitive information? If you are sending uh, something to a lot of people, use BCC, so blind copy it so they can't see each other's emails. Just kind of safety ways of, of working with emails. So mentioned passwords earlier, and this is really one of the when when we're looking at the steps for cybersecurity, having a strong password is one of the most important. Um, as it says on there, a huge amount of people across the world have their passwords one, two, three, four, five, six, which is an easy one to crack for any any, any criminal wanting wanting your details. And what we say is is try and create a strong per password by using free ran random words. And if you see at the bottom there, I've chosen free random words, and I I can nearly, nearly promise that when you finish this uh, today and you think about it tonight, you will still remember banana dog heart a dog heart because they're just free random words but you've seen the pictures there you kind of it kind of sticks in your head um, so it's just about thinking about free random words that you're going to remember that you can then use as a password um, don't use your child's name pet names favorite sports teams etc because if somebody looks at your social media page they'll often be able to find that information and guess what you what it is um, still use uh, numbers and symbols if you want to, but really the free random words is an easy way of creating a strong password. Um, just always try and remember uh, to keep your password secret. We kind of say treat your password as you treat your toothbrush. You know, who would you share your toothbrush with? Not very many people, so do just do the same with a, with a password. And definitely don't have um, posted note or sticky notes on your desk with, uh, with a password. So once you've written it down, somebody else can pick that up. Um, even if you're working in a workplace where um, where you're kind of knowing and you're trusting people you don't know who's going to come in and see that password so don't write it down you are responsible for your password um, using different password for different systems um, so obviously if somebody gets hold of it they can only get hold, get into one system um, and always log out so um, so get somebody you know don't use each other's pa passwords to get into if you're using a, a you know, perhaps a care, uh, care system uh, don't use um, don't use the same password uh, don't use everybody use the same password for, for a particular system you, you need to have individual passwords so using your mobile phone at work. So what I mean by this at the very at the moment for the first few um, uh, 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 bullet points anyway is around your work mobile. So uh, using a screen, a screen lock protection to make sure that uh, if you were to lose that mobile or somebody else pick it up, they can't get into it. Your mobile phone particularly if you have email on your work on your work mobile phone will have a lot of information a lot of data sensitive data that you need to protect make sure you have um, installed find my phone app of some sort there's lots of different different around so you can uh, find your phone the phone can be tracked locked wiped if need be if it is lost or stolen particularly if it has that those sensitive data on it and just like we talked about with um, if you're using computers, making sure that your uh, device and apps are up to date, that the security is as, as good as it can be. Only using trusted Wi-Fi if you go into a, a cafe or a, which obviously not at the moment or not from tomorrow. But um, if you're using a cafe or if you're going into a shop and you're using their Wi-Fi, um that's not secure wi-fi and therefore anybody can you don't know who's controlling and therefore you don't know who can get access to your phone if you are using your own mobile and apologies for the um, typo i've just seen on there um if you are using your own mobile for work um do have a look at the national cyber security bring your own rice approach because they have some uh, you need to think about uh, particularly if you're storing uh, sensitive data on your phone to make sure your phone is compliant. Um, so kind of 
if you go on on that link, you'll be able to see what they suggest that you should do if you're using your own mobile at work. So using WhatsApp, so lots of uh, care providers, some were still already using WhatsApp before the COVID pandemic, but definitely we've seen an increase in use of WhatsApp at, and so in social care establishments since um, the start of COVID. Really good way of communicating with teams because of the group uh, group chat functions, uh, sending messages out to staff teams, etc. So lots of people are using WhatsApp and it is a really secure way of doing it. Um, it has this end to end encryption, which means that nobody, not even WhatsApp, can, can see those messages. Um, it also has when you first set up WhatsApp, you have this two step verification where it basically means you can't just sign up without kind of entering in another password. So it is a really secure system, um, a really way, good way of, of, con of communicating with your staff team or if, or if you are the staff team, a good way for you to communicate with the people that you're working with or with, work, or with your managers. Um, making sure that it's like anything else, making sure that it is up to date. So if you're getting any kind of um, um, kind of notification from WhatsApp to say you need to update your security and update the app, then do so because that means that it is as secure as possible. Uh, and um, WhatsApp has got this adjustable control to help you um, kind of making sure that you have the most safe version and I'll, you will see in a minute that I've kind of added a link about how you can go in and you can just double check that what you are, what how you're managing your WhatsApp messages are the most secure if you are using WhatsApp for work. So just some of the things is to be uh, um, aware of. Um, so just thinking about um, are there any messages created with the contact, they they do have full access to the conversation and any attachment at and that means that they can reshare it with other people. So just thinking about what those WhatsApp messages. So if somebody sends something in a group that can be shared to other groups and to other individuals really, really easily. Um, therefore, you just need to think about is what, what am I sending? Is this a good thing to be sharing? Um, when using uh, WhatsApp for work purposes, good to have an understanding and ensuring that your data protection and your protocols are work. If you're understood and if you're not, if you're a frontline worker and you're not sure what that means, maybe talk to your manager. If you are a manager on this webinar today, uh, maybe just think about what are the things that I would like my staff to do? What are the things that I don't want them to do? Uh, when they are using something like WhatsApp and how am I, how are we making sure that the data that is um, uh, kind of within those WhatsApp groups is protected, how are we making sure that it's not being shared externally. If you are discussing the people you support for, use initials rather than names and just really trying to make sure you're not providing as little information that can identify people as possible, confidential information particularly. If you are using WhatsApp on a, a non-work phone, so really making sure that you're not mixing up contacts, particularly if you have um, uh, similar norms and maybe kind of have in brackets um, um, kind of work or something that makes it really clear that when if you are sending something to a contact that um, that, that person is for work and you're not, not mixing it up if you have um, five Sarah's as I have in my phone to making sure that it's the right Sarah's the one for work that you're sending information to. Um, being really careful with images, um, so photos. Um, so if you are sharing a photo in a WhatsApp group that's stored in all those people's phones, so again, making sure that they, you think about that, uh, that what if the photo you're sending, do you want that to be shared? Um, and it will be just mixed up with the rest of the photo. So making sure, do I want this photo to be on everybody else's phone? So if you have a large group, um, WhatsApp group, making sure you're think, just thinking about what is this photo you're sending. Um, it is really easy um, on WhatsApp if you're part of a group and you just want to share an image with one person just to kind of highlight that person and send something just to that person rather than sending it to the whole group. But altogether, uh, if you are sending, um, uh, oh, and just to say with, with the personal gallery, it is possible to um, 
uh, changes so your photos are not saved in your personal gallery and if you are using a, your own phone for WhatsApp for, for work that's a really good thing to do because uh, any works won't automatically uh, won't accidentally end up in your personal gallery and therefore not shared with with other people uh, if you are uh, you should not be sharing images of individuals uh, that you support or relatives and visitors unless they've given written consent and obviously if somebody doesn't have capacity you need to think about that too so really kind of careful about how you are sharing images um, and just kind of the final point really is is more about your well-being um, in terms of um, uh, notifications you know, WhatsApp will automatically alert you to messages. Um, you may, what if you're using uh, your personal phone for WhatsApp, your a WhatsApp group for work, you might want to turn notifications off at certain times to allow yourself some time away from from phones because we all need a bit of bit of space. Um, just before I move on, I just thought I'd sort of kind of share a bit of a, a, a warning. Um, before I joined Skills for Care, I worked for an organisation I was involved with um, investigating um, a, a quite tricky safeguarding, which was around sharing photos on, um, on it wasn't WhatsApp, but it was something similar that a member of staff, for, for very good reasons, had taken a photo of some of them they supported, shared it with colleagues, um, and it, it, it unfortunately had uh, was seen by somebody who didn't work for the organisation, and it definitely wasn't a, um, it wasn't uh, obviously pleasant for any of the people involved because it wasn't done with malice, but it's really just thinking about what am I, what am I doing, and definitely will, um, definitely if you are, if you are a frontline worker, have a think about can I, should I be, be turning this uh, automatically storing images on my photo photo and just think about again if you are sharing um, photos on WhatsApp or, or any other devices that you have got that permission before you do so. Uh, I do see there's quite a few questions coming, a few questions coming in, I will get to them at the end if that's okay, it just kind of interrupts the, the flow. So as I said earlier there is um, uh, some guys WhatsApp very uh, handily have these really easy guides about how to deal with it and us as Skills for Care has created this guide. So the, the guide which you see on there um, was created for social care. So those are things that we want to you want to think about as a, as a, a social care um, professional. What are the things I need to think about if I'm using WhatsApp at work? And then as I said, there's these uh, five videos of all of, of kind of um, information around how to, how to stay safe, how to do this two-step verification, how to stop photos being shared and how to turn off not notifications. So just a little bit about social media. Um, I'm just kind of aware of time, so I won't um, clearly talk more than I thought I would. So um, we're just kind of saying what is social media? Um, I don't know if anybody um, want to put in, what do you think social media in, in the chat? Just to kind of wake you up a little bit in case you're thinking this woman is droning on a bit. So if anybody's got any good ideas, what is social media? Hopefully somebody will put something in. Might be really obvious. OK, I'm going to move on. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Dawn. Facebook. Yeah, that's definitely one of them. Um, and just to say there obviously are a few more. So Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, LinkedIn. Thank you. A few more. Thank you very much. So yeah, so Twitter, etc. Um, so that's what we mean. What we mean by so by social media, and there's good and there's bad things about social media. And I'm sure you're aware of that um, from from the media and from talking to friends and family. So just from a social care point of view, so I'm obviously thinking about this as an employer uh, of social care. So as it says on there, what we mean by social media is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat. As a professional, you can learn a lot um, from social media. Um, so a form of, as, a, as a social care professional, um, Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn have a lot of information about good practices, lots of managers, frontline workers out there kind of sharing what they're doing, asking good questions about is this 
the best way for us to deliver care. Information about what's happening in the sector as a whole, there's a lot of information happening uh, available as well. So it is good to um, link into that. Good to make connection, obviously LinkedIn is particularly uh, useful for that. If your organisation you're working for may or may be using um, social media to recruit, to blog, to kind of post about their, the service. So if there's something that you are interested in, it might be worth talking to your manager and just saying, you know, what, what can I get involved with this? Because it is really interesting, a really good way of communicating with, with uh, people outside your organisation. However, there are a few things to think about. So, uh, and this is really kind of not not if you're managing your organization's Twitter account or Facebook uh, page, but this is for about you personally, how you are managing social media on your own phone, on your own um, on your on your own Facebook page, Twitter page, or, or whatever you you are using. So just really think about. Um, what think before you post assume that what you're posting can be shared and, and read by anybody um we always say you know really try and look at your privacy settings but even if your privacy settings are as tight as they can be your friends your family and people who are kind of seeing can still um, screenshot and and share that information so if you are just think about what you're what you're uh, posting out there and just kind of say well this is I'm okay for this to be seen by other people um definitely don't post an information that could identify a service a bit like we were talking about in uh, or I was talking about in WhatsApp just think about it in the same way uh, is there some way that a person can be identified photos individuals you're working with unless you have their uh, capacity unless they have capacity to make that decision the same goes with family and friends of the people you're supporting um, maintaining professional boundaries so I would say avoid adding uh, services on their family and friends as, as friends if you do get a request and and um, if you work worked in this sector for a while you're more than likely to to um, to have that I think uh, to say I, I can't um, mix social and professional contacts um, you are a social care professional therefore um, I think of it like that and I, um, people may feel a bit oh well I thought we were we were we were closer we were friends because you're seeing them at work but I think saying um, I can't mix um, professional and social is a good, really good thing to say because it, it, it does maintain those professional boundaries and definitely don't share confidential information when you had at some point had training in confidentiality just use that um, that training when you are using social media so if you're just thinking about um, uh, and particularly we're talking about confidentiality and, and being able to identify individuals if you're thinking about sort of kind of a famous person so let's um, pick someone like uh, something like Brad Pitt who perhaps has uh, you know a very famous Hollywood um, actor who um, if you google the name Brad Pitt you'll get a lot of information he's some of that information he's given out freely in interviews um, obviously he, the work that he's been involved with um, and you can you can see that if you're if you're googling him however he would have chosen I'm sure um, to keep some information private and it's about thinking about well how do I what are the things that I need to think about when I'm um, posting about other individuals you're working with um, or the, yourself what are the things that I want to keep private what are the things that I don't want the whole world to know um, so don't post um, inappropriate and offensive material um, just really think about you are a social care professional and therefore using your professional judgment to decide where is this a good post to uh, like to share um, particularly considering if your profile identifies your employer um, if you are um, friends with people that you're working with all those things if you if you are um, if you either have your your employers you're on your profile or you're friends with people you're working with if you are posting things with inappropriate and offensive material it may have a backlash at, at work particularly if it's something that's going to be seen as um, putting your the organization you work for in, into disrepute so um, 
don't make negative comments about, on social media about your employer. Um, if you have a grievance or concern, talk to um, your line manager um, instead of putting it on social media because, again, um, this could be seen as um, uh, putting your employer in dispute, particularly if it's very clear to um, identify your em employer. Um, uh, lots of employers will uh, will see that as a as a um, uh, kind of a, something that they need to deal with disciplinary wise, um, and so therefore you need to really think about what you're saying. Would you say this to um, your employers? Um, you know, to your manager. Go and talk to them instead. Um, consider if any post or comment could be considered as bullying harassment of your colleagues. Again, um, you, you might want to think about, well, is this something that I would say to somebody's face? Is it something that I w could be seen by my employer, particularly if uh, you are identifying your employer uh, and you are friends with people that you're working with? Would, could this be seen as bullying and harassment? And, and I think just following your employer social media policy, um, thinking about am I am I able to use social media while I'm in work, work? You know, do you know where those practices are? And if you really don't know, ask advice, ask your manager. And if you are a manager on this webinar today and you don't have a social media policy, uh, ha have a look at social um, digital social care. Um, but also just think about what are the things that you think is acceptable and what do you think is not acceptable. So, uh, just wanted to show you, uh, we don't, not everybody gets it right. Um, so this is Jeremy Hunt when he was the health secretary or health minister, uh, had this photo taken in a hospital um, and behind him, and um, you can't see it now because it's been blacked out, but that was a whiteboard with very confidential information about the patients. So we don't all get it right. And I think it's just about thinking and, and clearly thinking about what's around you, etc. So um, nearly kind of finished. Um, just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what you might want to do next. Um, so if you haven't had cybersecurity training in the last 12 months, ask your employer about it and they can access, access that free training uh, via the National Security Centre. If your service is not signed up to NHML, again speak to your manager about it because you need to be able to send uh, care record, records securely. If you haven't got a uh, Find My Phone app on your phone, um, try and install that, particularly if you're using your phone at work and it's particularly your work phone. If you have one of those. If you are using your own phone at work, um, then um, do have a look at that bring your own device um, approach and, and think about what are the things that we need to consider if we're using um, uh, uh, our, phone, our own phones at work in terms of data, sensitive data being stored. Uh, making sure that I uh, use WhatsApp safely and I would say particularly around that storing photos in the photo gallery. And then finally, ask your employer about their social media policy. Uh, and before I finish, I just want there's just a couple of slides which you will get after this presentation with links to um, the cybersecurity um, guidance I was talking about earlier, guides to social media um, and, and information. The digital social care have, have uh, that's what they're there for. They're there to help you as, as a frontline worker and they're to to help you as a manager with in, um, around so, uh, digital working. And finally, I just wanted to show you these free trainings which are literally just happening over the next week, but there will be more events happening. So if you can't make those particular dates, because I realise it's very short notice, have a look on the digital uh, social care event page. They do have them coming up and as you can see, it's covering a little bit of the things that I've been talking about, but in more depth. So. That was the end of my presentation. So, Emily, I can see I have a few things in the chat. Are you able to sum them up for me? Yeah, sure. We've actually got two questions, um, so I'll read them out. They're both from yeah. Chetna. Um, so the first one is, um, I use my NHS mail address to write to health professionals regarding specific residents. One health professional said that my message should still be anonymised, but I thought the whole point of using the NHS mail was to send secure messages. What should I be doing? 
I think if you can, uh, if it doesn't compromise your message to 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 kind of anonymize it, I think it's a good it's good practice because you don't know where who who's going to see it. But I completely see what you're saying that it is supposed to be be secure, and it is secure. It's more about who other others can see that if, if for instance, somebody the person at the other end left their screen on, etc. If it compromises what you are saying. Um, so obviously you will need to identify the individual and sometimes you will be sending things like um i don't know kind of medication records and that obviously won't be uh, anonymized um i would um the uh, early on emily shared um, an email address if you do have any more question about nhs mail and i'm really not an expert on nhs mail um do either kind of attend the training um via the uh, digital um, the, the design and learning center email uh, they have a number of training sessions happening over the next month or so um, they will a be about nhs mail setup but it'll also be about some of those questions that you might be thinking about you know about confidentiality about um, dignity how making sure that you're using digital is safely so i would really recommend signing up if you are a home care provider uh, have a look have a look on the digital social care because they have some they have some really really good resources that go into a lot of details um so you see the email there uh, the the, the um uh, website there really really helpful um and because it's written for social care really helpful for for you as a, a social care professional the other question um, the other question is um from chetna as well so i set up a whatsapp group for the families to keep them updated with respect to covid etc Families often ask me what their loved ones are doing. Can I tell them this or is it breaking any GDPR rules by mentioning the names on WhatsApp? I can't use um, initials because they'll know who I mean and B, it's impersonal. Um, I don't put pictures of individuals on it. I think if it, it is it, um, and obviously this depends. So if it's a whole group, so if you're having lots of families on the same group, uh, I would be a bit wary about uh, depending what your what the information are if it's non sensitive for families. OK, so I I think in terms of uh, getting so, so it's about getting that agreement. So I will be talking to all those individuals involved um, to um, to try and make sure that you you have agreement about what it is that you're going to be sharing on there so i wouldn't be sharing how um you know kind of medical information but you might share or oh, we uh, did a quiz today and then that's i think that's absolutely fine um but it's just about thinking about it and about being having that sort of kind of quite transparent way of working so maybe with those four families you might say okay well these are the topics i can discuss uh these are the things that i can't discuss if you want more personal information then you'll have to um contact me with that you know with um, not via that group chat if it's for if if it's so I'm, I'm, get, I'm maybe getting a bit confused is it a group of four feet people all together or is it four different families your messages individually because i think if you message them individually and you're talking to them um it's just about having that conversation with them saying well, i can do this but i can't do can't do that i don't i'm not i wouldn't worry so much about gdpr it's more about uh, making sure that that information can't be shared and as i said earlier in my presentation if you remember uh, the thing with WhatsApp, and I'll just go back to it. The thing with WhatsApp is it's so easy to share information. So you send informa information. There you go. There it is. Um, you send information to one person saying, you know, this is what we did today, or so and so is not too good today, or, wh or whatever that is. That can so easily be shared uh, by everybody. And I think if you have a conversation with those families and saying um, the reason why we're using initials for instance um it's because of making making sure to protect your person that you're a loved one so i i don't think there's anything wrong with using initials um I, I, it may see in person but i think it's just about having that conversation with the individual and explaining why that is and i'm pleased that you're not sharing photos any other questions yes yeah, let's hope that answers your question um chetna Okay. Um, I think that's it. Unless anyone else has any more questions, I want to pop in the chat now. Um, that's all the questions we've had. So I really, really recommend having a look at some of all these um, 
guidance it may see quite overwhelming but some of them are really really good the cyber security one is really really good um and um uh, the digital social care has some really useful information for anybody working in social care thinking about what what how do i need to be safe so thank you very much for today thank you thank you for and your help no problem and if anybody else wants any more information or if there's anything i haven't answered and you didn't want to ask in the chat do contact me. my email is there um and thank you very much thank you have a lovely afternoon guys